Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order, uh, if we could. Okay. Yeah, sorry. We'll have roll call first, please. Warren, here. Paul, here. Powers. Decker, uh, here. Here. Hannah, here. Ryan here. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. We have the Pledge of Allegiance. Vice Chairperson. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I want to thank everybody for showing up this evening. Um, before we get started, Alderman Hannah would want to say just something quickly. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, it's too, too soon to thank you for your service on the council, uh, but so this is probably the last meeting between you the whole. I want to thank you for the hard work you've done. Thank you. Uh, I know it can be a thankless job, and it's a big responsibility, and we really appreciate all the work you've done. Thanks very much. Very nice of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate everybody coming this evening. It was kind of short notice, and uh, if you have your scrub pails out and your uh, dust rags, we're going to clean up house <laughs> in the uh, Committee of the Whole. I uh, met with uh, uh, City Clerk uh, Sue Richards the other day, and I was surprised how many things were in the folder. And uh, these are things, many of the things on this agenda tonight have been dealt with by a different committee. Uh, but it's a matter of us clearing our folder to be sure that uh, we have some designation. Either we can file it, we can send it on to the new council if we want, uh, or we can deal with it tonight if you want to, or make, and make a recommendation for the next council meeting. So uh, this hopefully might be the last meeting. I'm not sure. We might have another committee to hold. It depends on the timing of things. So um, let's go right ahead uh, with... Uh, things I first of all need to approve of the minutes from the previous meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion on that? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay. Thank you. Minutes stand approved. Okay. Number five on the agenda is a uh, document. Again, it's a challenge to see if you could find these documents. Uh, they're going way back. Some of them. This is number twenty thirty, and it was. Um, Submitted by the finance director and treasurer, our year to date ambulance fund 2008 versus 2009. It was number 2030. It showed an activity, activity chart and activity for calls from January 109 to September 3009. Um, we have Alderman Rinfleisch. Actually, that was for the minutes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you want to talk about the minutes? Nope. I was going to make the motion. But. Oh, okay. Did we, did we not second the minutes? <laughs> yeah, it was oh, already taken okay. care of. All right. I okay. questioned before that, and then he, he got Okay. Sorry. Okay. Alderman Hanna, did you have something? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I think this was dealt with in the past. Uh, I think we are anxiously awaiting year-end data, uh, so I would make a motion to file. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded to file number 2030. Any discussion? Okay, want to, okay, Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Oop, you're not on. There you go. Having to do with uh, document 2030, uh, and maybe I'll have the chief explain it, but I, I got an email from the chief last Wednesday regarding, regarding ambulance collections and that type of thing, and I think it goes along with this document. And the gist of the document was is that last week uh, somebody in, in the department uh, discovered that for the last two years and a quarter, we have not been billing properly for Medicaid and Medicare. And in the chief's email and a discussion I had with him, he estimates that we were under billing every call for Medicare and Medicaid by about $100. And his early estimate was that had we been billing correctly, that would have meant another uh, his initial estimate was about five hundred and forty thousand dollars that we would have well, that we would have collected. That apparently now we can't collect because apparently we can't go back and rebuild these these accounts. But uh, I guess 
on the positive note, if we continue to stay in the ambulance business and this situation is corrected, we're going to be collecting more, more revenue on Medicare and Medicaid accounts as we go forward. The negative thing that it, it was quite shocking is why this was not discovered before and we're out potentially a half a million dollars on what we would have collected. So uh, maybe if, if the chief would, con would maybe want to come forward and give the council a, his explanation of what he sees has happened and what, he, what corrective measures he, he's taken as we go forward. I see the chief is here tonight. Chief Herman, would you like to come up, please? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Alderman Board, I would say that my original estimate of the 540 is probably high. That's uh, figuring $100 for every call that we went on. Uh, realistically, it, it is more of a Medicare, Medicaid issue because those are, um, we collect basically 100% of those calls of what they pay. Um, it is somewhat of a training issue that came to light um, by some of my senior paramedics that have worked for private ambulance services um, that are advising me of different ways of, of writing our reports. And um, it's very disturbing that our billing agency was not coming to us and giving us the training because that's where it should be coming from. Um, obviously, we're going through uh, RFPs right now for new billing agencies, and that will be addressed. Uh, it's not such a large increase in your collection rate because we will be billing a higher amount, but the amount collectible is where you'll see the difference, and I anticipate that that should be much better uh, starting within the next couple of weeks uh, and then continuing on in, into next year when we get a new billing agency, if we choose a new one, which I'm leaning very strongly towards. Okay. Uh, Alderman Hanna. You Thank you, Madam yeah. Chair. Uh, Chief, why can't we go back and collect those revenues? I don't know exactly what the answer to that is. That would be a billing agency question, but it would be a matter of I don't know how far back you can go. I think in the, um, the near past, we possibly can rebuild some of those. I don't know that we can go back uh, two years. Still on. Alderman Well, I think, uh, you know, g given the potential magnitude of this, I think it's imperative uh, that we go back as far as possible. Um, and I do think it's unconscionable that the uh, billing agent didn't train you on that. Um, I'm hard pressed to get excited about renewing their contract. I would say a lot of this came to light on uh, Tuesday or Wednesday of last week. Uh, we had a scheduled training exercise that our billing agency was coming in to do for our paramedics, which we do um, periodically. Um, I'm going to request that whoever our billing agency is in the future, that it be a quarterly training session because it is that important that um, just a difference of a couple of words in our narrative um, can mean $100 on what we can bill and what we can collect. Uh, so uh, after observing some of their training exercise last week, I was extremely disappointed. Um, and I think it got to a boiling point amongst our paramedics that said this is not acceptable and a change needs to be made. Um, and we're acting on it as we speak. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I guess what's disturbing to me in, in some respects, Chief, and maybe the full, your full investigation hasn't taken place yet, but. I guess it, it's almost unfathomable to me that you wouldn't have somebody on your staff that would have the expertise to know what the billing procedures were without having to depend on the billing service for training. I mean, you have a, you have a, very, you have a very senior person in your department who had experience in the private sector before he came to the, to the fire department, and I would, I would presume that included billing and you know, for this to go two and a quarter years being unrecognized, and now we've got this huge amount of money that 
we probably are not going to be able to collect, although I understand the, the city attorney is also looking into the matter. Uh, it's just, it's all, almost mind-boggling that it would go this long without being discovered. Um, the member that you're talking about uh, did not have any expertise in billing. That Billing is really a whole separate issue from um, the ambulance service. That's why we contract out with a separate billing agency. And um, if anybody dropped the ball on this, it, it was our billing agency. Um, should we have been monitoring it sooner? Uh, yes, but as soon as it came to light, we acted on it. Um, Alderman Hanna, do you have a question? Thank you. Just, I actually have a question for Alderman Bourne. Okay, thank you. Uh, Alderman Bourne, do we know, uh, do we have a, a fixed time as to when we're going to get uh, the financial impact report from uh, Terry Hansen? I intend on asking Terry that tonight at finance he, at par, as part of his report. If you'll be so kind to send us an email, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. I had a discussion with Terry this afternoon. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Uh, I talked with Terry about that very thing this afternoon. He will have information for us at the Finance Committee meeting, but within the next two weeks, uh, it looks like two to three weeks. Just a matter of end of year compiling of, uh, of all the numbers. Okay. Um, all right, we have a motion on the floor to file. Thank you, Chief Herman. Anything else? Any other further discussion? Should we take a vote on these things, these filings? Yeah. File? Move to okay, um, we'll take a, um, a vote on this one to file it. Okay. Roll call vote favor. or just all in favor? Okay, all in favor of filing 2030. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed to filing? Okay, 2030 is filed. Oopsie. Alderman Bell. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, if it were the pleasure of this body, I would suggest we treat items 6 through 18, consider treating it like a consent agenda. And if anyone feels strongly, I would make the motion to file items 6 through 18. And then under discussion, if you choose to treat it like a consent agenda, if you feel strongly about, differently about one of the other items, that might get us through tonight a lot faster. So I, okay, very good. Okay, there's been a, a, a motion and second to consider all the rest of the items from 6 <laughs> through 18 as consent. To file. To, to file right. as consent agenda. Um, I know... Yeah. Okay, is there any discussion? I have two people here who are wanting to speak on number um, eight and number nine. So I think we have to, I want to pull those out for special okay. consideration. Move to pull eight and nine out for special consideration. Second. Okay. All right. Um, so let's look at eight and nine. Uh, otherwise, everything else will sit as um, move to file right now. Okay, number eight, um, which is number 2122 on the council agenda, submitting a communication from Edward Wachowski <coughs> regarding changes that he would like to see in section 2-558 of the municipal code entitled <coughs> Composition Appointment Terms, Transit Commission. Citizen uh, Wachowski, would you like to come up, please? I think it was my What is item nine, Jim? It's the it's the same. It's related to the same thing. Oh, it is okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Ed. Hmm. Okay, uh, Ms. Matoska. I want to thank you for bringing this issue up before uh, the committee of the whole. And excuse me, because I have a cold, so if you can't hear me, I'll have okay. to speak up. I'd just like to read the rationale, if I may, for the package that I just passed out. It says, presently, the Transit Commission consists of nine members. I am proposing that the number of the commissioners be reduced to five. Enclosed in the package that you received are copies of the Transit Commission meetings, minutes, for the past year. and do not reflect any item, at least that I can tell, that requires the expertise of the mayor, development director, or the police chief to be brought to a conclusion. At the last meeting, the vice chair of the commission stated that it was vital that these individuals attend the meetings if the meetings were to be successful. That statement in itself is a little bit confusing to me, and the reason I say that is because in the transit commission board 
commissions and committees, the Transit Commission brought forth to this council an amendment to section 2558. And you don't have to write that down because I have another package to give you and it's in there, okay? But I just want to read it as, as stated. The mayor, the chief of police, and the director of city development may designate another member, any member, of their respective department to attend a meeting or meetings of the Transit Commission in his or her absence with full power to act on his or her, her stead. Which means, in essence, that the Transit Commission had brought to you saying, we don't really need these people, we just need some warm bodies there. Okay, and that's uh, the reason I wrote this thing. Um, this action states very clearly that the individuals in question are not essential to proper conduct of transit business. It may be well to note that the Finance Committee Chair has chosen, and I might say wisely, not to attend the transit meetings and to expend his energy towards solutions to the budget needs of the city. There has been no discussion or concern of his absence at these meetings. Article enclosed, and you have it there, shows some of the articles that are in the newspapers that we read every day. The mayor saying he needs more time to spend on attracting and retaining businesses. The drug problems that we have in the community, which really requires the police chief's uh, attention. And the loss of another business within the community. I ask that you approve this request so that those three people can spend their full time on their and their expertise and energies in dealing with the drug problems, attaining and retaining <coughs> businesses. Thank you very kindly. Okay, thank you, Mr. Mikulski. Okay, all right. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Okay, um, Alderman Gisha, and we have a couple lights on, so we'll pick this. Okay, okay. Alderman Gisha first. Thank you. Um, uh, that's right. I, I don't. Uh, our our city ordinance allows you to have a designee, just so you don't think the finance committee was covered at the meetings. <laughs> Alderman Heideman has been my designee uh, to the transit commission, and uh, I've been I've sat in that commission for I think, three years, and I uh, I do have questions with the makeup of the committee. Uh, I'm not sure this is. Uh, I'd have to see what other communities and maybe Ed, you have some of that information, how other committees make up their transit commission. But um, I know we have to have a county designee and so forth and things like that. Uh, I, when I, I was shocked when I saw the police chief there every time. Police chief spending his time at the transit commission meeting, you know, over and over and over. I, and the fire chief, yeah, it just director of development. Um, certainly they could be called in if a question needed to be answered. But I, I don't disagree. I think the makeup of the commission, I think, would be closer to the people if we had more riders on it. We don't have one single rider in that commission. A regular user of the Transit Commission, <coughs> unless Joe does as my designee. I know. <laughs> so I agree that there that there could be some real tweaking there. I think to make it more responsive to the people. Okay. Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I think maybe it's a good idea to expand it and add some riders. I think that would be a good idea. Uh, the police chief, because he's the person who's in charge of the rescue and transit is part of the city emergency rescue. Remember when we had the committee of the whole last year, the year before, out at the fire department? That is the fire department and with the police chief as the appointee to be in charge is part of the rescue for the city when it comes to a tornado or anything like that. So I think they do have to have the ability to vote. And maybe they send their designees for most of the, 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 the meetings, but I think they actually do need the ability to vote when the action is necessary. And sometimes their, their vote is necessary. And the warm body part bothered me, thank you. Okay, um, Jim, did you? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, Alderperson Kittleson. Oh, thank you, Madam Chairman. I think at our last transit meeting that uh, Ron McDonald gave a good explanation of why he thought that the, the, the makeup of the Transit Commission was as, as it is. Um, and so that was real helpful for me. Um, you know, I, if we maybe like to bring 
Ron up if yes. he would okay. talk to us about that. What you know, Director tell McDonald? the committee of the whole what the what he did explain to the transit commission. Thank you very much. <clears throat> At the last Transit Commission meeting, we did discuss the makeup mm -hmm. uh, of the commission. Currently, there, there are nine bodies on the board, or on the commission. There are three citizen members appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the council. The mayor, the chairman of the Finance Committee, the chairman of Public Protection and Safety, and the chairman of Public Works, along with the director of Economic Development and Planning, and the chief of police. The Transit Commission not only oversees transit, but also oversees the parking utility. The last discussion was about the police chief. There's a lot of interaction with the police department. From the parking side of it, the police department issues the citations related to the parking in the downtown area, and they're very involved in, in that effort, and I think it's important for them to be involved mm -hmm. in that aspect on the Transit Commission. Uh, also, uh, since 9-11, the Federal Transit Administration, along with the rest of the federal government, has required a lot of reporting related to security and related to transit. One of the things I have to do is report to the Federal Transit Administration on a regular basis what our security presence is on our transit system. Um, they prefer that we have uh, uh, our own security, and I have to explain to them that I'm sufficient uh, that we're, we're sufficiently meeting our needs with our local police department because of our municipality makeup and having the, chile, uh, the chief on the board. So I, I think that's an integral part of it. Re regarding the mayor, um, I, I do think he's a valuable member of the commission. Um, the mayor and the director of economic development and planning are actively trying to pursue economic development in the community. Um, I don't believe that we're the cause of one business leaving recently, but I, I do believe that we will be a part of the economic development for the businesses that come into this community. Some of the economic development will require transit for them to relocate here. That is going to be a part of it. And I think having the mayor and the director of economic development makes a lot of sense. And I, I give a uh, pat on the back to the folks that set this committee up. There are different ways of setting up commissions. I was involved in one in Green Bay. It was a different makeup. Personally, I think this is a better makeup. The proposal was for three citizen members, along with the chair of the Finance Committee and the chair of the Public Protection and Safety Committee, for five members. If we go to that, what you've done is you've given away the majority rule of any type of voting on the Transit Commission is going to be non-elected officials making a decision how the Transit Commission runs their business, spends your money. You think about that. Um, the chairman of Public Works, we do a lot of interaction with the Public Works Department. They do our signage for us. Um, they, they interact, they control some of the parking lots down by the marina. Uh, they, they also take care of the, the boat slips uh, that are charged in assessment by the parking utility or, or charge a fee, an additional fee by the parking utility along the riverfront. There, those are some concerns and I think that's all important that we interact. I don't think that this is a time we should actually have less communication and have less people on board. Uh, part of the discussion at the Transit Commission level was uh, the possibility of expanding uh, our makeup rather than decreasing it. Uh, we, we certainly partner with a number of other municipalities. We partner with Kohler. We partner with Sheboygan County. We partner with Kohler. Um, you know, we might want to consider what their roles should be if they should have representation on the board because the decisions that we make can affect their budgets also. So those are some of the discussions that went on at the Transit mm -hmm. Commission. Are there any questions for um, Director McDowell? Okay, um, uh, Alderman Balk, you, you, you were first, but are you, do you have a question for our, okay, Alderman Hanna. Great, thank you for that explanation. Um, I agree with you that uh, our service is becoming more and more countywide and we probably need to look at giving a voice uh, to some of the other communities. Um, I've also thought that some way uh, we need to get some representation from large businesses on. Um, we may think we're 
we're on top of how they're thinking about their problems, but I think the input from a large employer would be mm -hmm. important. So I mm -hmm. suggest that perhaps we uh, we target expanding to more countywide and also looking at large employers. Alderman Balk. Oh, no, oh your... I'm sorry. I meant to turn my light off, but oh, apparently okay. I just keep resetting. Okay, <laughs> we just keep blinking away there. <laughs> um, do we? I will. Uh, we can. We do can. We, do we know enough about this tonight? Uh, do, can we resolve this tonight, or do we need to forward it to the next no. committee of the whole? I guess. Do we need to continue to move the next council? You no. Mean? Move it to the until next year. Right. I make a well, motion just, to file. Oh. Okay. It's been. There's a motion on the floor to file. Second to file. Any other discussion on the file? Alderman Boren. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Director McDonald, what was the uh, what was the opinion of the uh, when you talked about this at the Transit Commission? I maybe I maybe you said that and maybe I missed it, but uh, is it was it the was it the uh, opinion of the current Transit Commission to leave leave it the way it is, or are you considering bringing on more public members? What's what was the bottom line decision? Well, I don't want to put words in the mouth of the council members that were at the commission, but I will tell you my understanding of it. The commission voted to file the communication. Uh, there was discussion that it should be expanded, or at least uh, studied for expansion in the future, but that wasn't on the agenda, so we didn't spend a lot of time on it. But that was certainly the feeling of the Transit Commission that should be a future agenda item for discussion. Thank you. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you. Um, we've heard discussions about having riders be, you know, down the road, be, have uh, more of a say on the board, obviously in the board, county, businesses, we've heard discussion. Mm -hmm. If we file today, uh, where does that discussion go? Would it be more successful to you if we do refer it over to the next committee of the whole of the next common council uh, to keep that discussion in the air, or would you rather you know, have the discussions with a different document down the road? Well, I, I think the, if that's the wishes of the council, under the current makeup, there are three council members on the commission along with the mayor, mm -hmm. and that direction can certainly be implemented through the Transit Commission to proceed with that. Um, you know, so, I, you know, I, I think it's certainly going to be discussed. That, that was certainly the uh, intent of the commission, at least what, what I heard them telling me. And, again, I don't want to speak for Alderman Hanna, but that was certainly a comment that was uh, voiced at the commission meeting that that should be looked at in the future as okay. an agenda item. So it sounds like that, the preference the would be to... That's going to happen. If we're looking at the other expansion, if the, if the will of this committee is to file this particular makeup but look at perhaps expanding representation, your recommendation would be then to file this time, not keep this document alive, and then rewrite something in, down the road. Is that correct? I think that's a, a good way to go. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Alder Kirsten Kittleson. Thank you, Madam Chairman. And I'll tell you that the mayor is part of the commission, and, and he was involved in the discussion that, you know, he, and he makes the, the appointments, mm -hmm. of course, so that he, he does know, you know, what we discussed, and, and yes, that, you know, maybe we'd like to look to Falls or, or Kohler or, you know, look outside to, to appoint someone in that area and, you know, keep it going that way. Okay. Um, Alder Person Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I, th th thank you, Mr. McDonald. I think it is a good idea to expand it and consider expanding. But my motion to file is this, just this particular communication, not that idea by okay. any means, but this particular communication. Okay. Um, Alderman Gisha. Thank you. I, I have a tendency, I think, probably try to keep it around rather than file it. We don't know who the makeup of that of the committees will be for the future years, just so that things can tend to get lost. Um, and uh, and I think a lot of people do have strong feelings about the makeup. I think there's some pitfalls of expanding it out to these county communities who don't really pay their fair share. They pay a token amount. I didn't see any of their stimulus money going toward the new buses. It was city of Sheboygan's stimulus money that their people will be riding on. Uh, so I think you have some issues there with suddenly having three members or four members from the outside having control over city of Sheboygan tax dollars, which if it wasn't for us, they wouldn't have any cushy seats to put their wonderful uh, uh, citizens' behinds on. Um, 
and uh, as far as the mayor being on the commission, I can, I can understand that. But again, our, the, we don't work for the mayor, you know, <laughs> in this room. I, I know the mayor understands that. I'm not telling him anything differently. We're our own independent body, and we don't even know who's going to be representing us on that commission <coughs> next year. So I think until we get a comfort level there, I myself will vote not to file this and just let it hang on. And if necessary, we have the ability to pull it out um, for next year's uh, committee, the whole chairman, whoever that we decide as a group who that is. Okay, uh, Alderman Balk. Thank you, Madam Chair. Right, and that's the direction I was going when I, uh, b uh, before my colleague made her motion, which is absolutely fine. Uh, I was saying, hey, we're not going to vote on this before the next meeting. And after that, there are going to be a handful of other people who are going to want to learn about it and have a voice in it. So my intent will be to vote no on the current motion and then to f if, if it should be voted down, to, f to put forth a motion that would forward it to the next uh, either council or committee of the whole so that that new group of people who are elected in can contemplate and do the right thing after that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. Um is anyone here going to speak to the motion to file? <coughs> okay, uh, citizen Amontelio, come up, please. Thank you, Madam Chairman. I'll try to make this as brief as I can. I'm the vice chairman of Transit Commission. Okay, our firefighters made a good decision to the makeup of the Transit Commission. <coughs> And it, was, and it has worked very well over all these years since its implementation. I thank any citizen for the suggestions to make a more efficient committee or a commission. However, the suggestions don't address the five W's, who, what, where, when, and why. Lacking are the reasons for the suggested proposed changes, especially since the Transit Commission makeup has been very successful since its implementation. The Transit Commission works as an established team to solve problems using all of the assigned members' talents and expertise to make sound decisions. We cannot be part of a chosen few political appointed commission. We must do what's best for our community. Paul Ender's staff and their talents are a big part of transit and we need their input on many of our matters that we deal with in this commission. Case in point of the role the transit plays in our city's comprehensive plan, which is our city's blueprint. The applications of state and federal monies that we may qualify require Paulette's expertise and her recommendations. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, that transit is part of our city's emergency response team, as well as all other departments when responding to emergencies. Case in point was a quick transit response to supply two buses at the recent fire emergency at June's restaurant. The mayor and the Sheboygan Police Department are also a vital part of our emergency response team. And the mayor normally would designate the chief of police as the response manager in any city declared emergency. The sheriff would take that responsibility if it's a county emergency. I ask you not to support any change that would jeopardize the city's teamwork, safety of our community, and the established proven success of the Transit Commission. Thank you. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, uh, Alderman Bourne, do you have to speak to the filing? Though? Okay. I think uh, we can turn lights off. Um, all right. On the floor is a motion to file. Um, should we take a vote on this? I think we might because I think we've got uh, different opinions. Um, call, roll call, please. Motion to file this um, number 2122. Form, no. Paul. No. Uh, Decker? No. Bishop? No. Anna? No. Uh, no. Bach? No. Kittleson? Aye. Uh, Pinus? No. Montemayor? Aye. Whiteflesh? No. Sir? No. Vanderly? No. Who? Uh, no. Okay. okay, the motion fails. Now, do we have any other action that we want to do on this one? Uh, Alderman, Alderman Bauk? Uh, Madam Chair, I'd move to forward this to the, probably the committee of the whole of the next, uh, the next council uh, so that those new members can learn in the, in the committee of the whole learning environment. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to forward this to the next committee of the whole. Any discussion? 
Madam Chairman, if we could also, with attached documentation. Oh, with attached, yes. With okay. handouts, so we with at least have it all in one repository. That's a friendly okay. amendment. Oh, sorry, thank you. <laughs> I accept. <laughs> thank you, Carter. Okay, amended to, with the uh, attached Second. document. <laughs> okay, all right, so it's been amended to, that we attach this document that all um, council people received. Okay, any discussion on that? Okay, can we take, um, I think let's ask for just a voice vote on this. How many in favor of affording this to the next Committee of the Whole? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you very much. Thank you for uh, preparing that, uh, Mr. Wachowski. Okay, number nine is also related. Um, <coughs> An ordinance, it's number 2150, an ordinance repealing and recreating section 2-563 of the Municipal Code relating to fiscal control of the Transit Commission expenditures so as to conform with current practice. Uh, I, I would say, uh, Director McDonald, do you have anything you want to say about this? Is there anything we need to know uh, as a filling in? It's just a matter of referring it or filing? Or... There was action taken, I believe, by the Transit Commission, wasn't there? I think we... We acted on this. I mean, you, we acted in the council on it. This item was brought in front of the Transit Commission. Uh, let me back up. <clears throat> there was a, a discussion. Uh, Terry Hansen approached me, and there was a discussion whether we, the Transit Commission was actually practicing what the ordinance said. And through discussion with Attorney McLean and Finance Director Terry Hansen, uh, the ordinance language was written to follow the established practice that's been going on for decades with the Transit Commission. Uh, it was recommended by the Transit Commission to forward that on to the Council for approval. It lied over at the Council. It was then referred on to the Committee of the Whole, and we're here today to talk about it. Okay. Um, but that, that's the history of it. The, the Transit okay. Commission has has actually endorsed this resolution or this uh, ordinance change. Okay. Uh, for, for for discussion. All right. Um, Alder Person Rinfleisch. Actually, I punched in Before. initially to make the motion to refer, okay. uh, but I do have uh, something to say on this okay. one, so it worked out. Um, since the Transit Commission has recommended approval. Um, of this, and since it is current practice or past practice, I guess, so we, what we're just kind of conforming to, um, I move that we uh, uh, accept and adopt general ordinance. Uh, again, we're not actually doing it, we're referring it to ourselves and the Common Council to do so, um, but uh, on the next agenda, but I'll make that motion. So you make a motion to recommend a, um, acceptance to the Council. Okay. Nice. There's a second from Alderman okay. Any discussion on that motion to accept? Discussion. To accept and yes, all the person Oh, thank you. Um, just for background, for that hasn't been said for maybe some who aren't aware of this, the library board works much like the transit commission, where they have to approve the bills on the library board level, so all the library uh, board members are aware of it because they are, have the ability to act independently. That. Correct me wrong, Ron, if I'm going astray here. The same ordinance of how they go through the process of paying and approving those bills are by statute applied to the Transit Commission. The Transit Commission, for decades, has not approved their bills. So you have, tran the, the downfall is you have Transit Commission members who don't see what the bills are from a check and balance standpoint. Um, <coughs> and the, the statute is clear, it's, or, or is it an ordinance? The ordinance is clear. They have to present the bills. Haven't been doing it, I don't, there's no nefarious action or anything like that. But if we vote no, transit commissioners then don't have, they should have been doing it all along, but don't have the ability to police their own uh, kind of independent makeup committee. And if you look at the makeup committee like we just talked about, there are a lot of city employees on that committee, though really only three members at large, community members at large, um, as far as having community input about what they're spending and what they're not. Transit commissions are different than committees. You know, they have different powers, different authorities. They can do things unilaterally, and having the ability of that commission people who are in charge of running those parking lots and transit system, if we, if we vote for them not to be able to look at the bills or change that <coughs> ordinance, 
we're then really, where's the check and balance from a commission? A commission is a standalone deal, you know? They have different powers and authorities. So I just wanted to bring that up about what, what that really does. It's different than a, the, the finance committee or some, or some other committee. There's no, we have a lot of checks and balances within it. And I think that's why it was put there in the first place, like the library board, from a historical standpoint. And we'd be taking that away, just so everybody understands. Okay. Okay, we have some lights on. Um, uh, Alder person, Mont Alder person Montemayor, do you want to speak on this? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, Mr. McDonald, uh, the Transit Commission has already acted on this, right? Correct. Do we as a council have the ability to change your action in any manner, it being your, your commission? The question at, at the council is whether or not to amend an ordinance. Um, if I could just clarify things, I think Alder McGisha was close, but I don't think entirely accurate. And, and I will take the opportunity, Please, as thank you, you asked. <clears throat> the library, by state statute, has to do things by state statute. The Transit Commission fiscal control is by municipal ordinance. The practice, as far as I can see going backwards, has been the finance department is the keeper of the books for the Transit Commission. When goods are purchased, they're purchased through the purchasing agent. When goods are received, they're signed off from by staff who receives those goods and then I approve them back to the finance director who reviews them again and then ultimately pays those bills. What's been the practice, including when the author or the, the uh, person who brought this forward was chairman of the commission, uh, was that the transit commission chair gets a check register, a journal of every payment made and reviews that with, when they get their packet, they get a journal from the finance department of all the checks that have been written. This particular ordinance is to allow for that to continue. It isn't that the commission can't review the check journal. The, the ordinance allows that <coughs> for bills to be paid prior to the commission approving them. The commission meets once a month. We have goods and services that are billed out and are due far less than 30 days. As an example, when we buy diesel fuel, I believe that's on a 10-day term. <coughs> so we either have to start meeting once a week. By the way, as I reviewed this ordinance again today, I did see the Transit Commission is supposed to be meeting once a week, except for the three months in the summer. So perhaps we should look at meeting once a week to do that. I mean, if that's really what the council wants to do. Um, or we need to amend the ordinance. I mean, mm -hmm. we're, th th this, I, I saw it today, Jim. I'm, I'm not trying to, right. that's what, that's what the, the right. ordinance says. And I think that's probably why it was written that way. So bills can be reviewed, they can be paid. And, and, and I don't, personally, I don't care. I mean, if, if you want to do that, I, I just don't think it's a good practice because we, we have to, uh, pay for the goods and services well within that 30 day period where the commission meets. And if there's another mechanism to, mechanism to do it, <coughs> fine. Uh, I will tell you that satisfactory and continuing control uh, were audited probably more than any other department in the city of Sheboygan and I would, I would welcome additional oversight if, if so desired by the council. Uh, we're audited by the city's financial auditor. We're audited by the federal government. We're audited, audited by the state government. Um, we have audits going on a regular basis. So uh, that part of it doesn't bother me. Um, but I think to allow for the timely payment is, is really what the Transit Commission is trying to get done in, in letting this go through. Uh, one of the comments that Finance Director Terry Hansen made to me um, in, in our discussion is, is that the Transit Commission has said, basically my position is hired to run the system, to pay the bills, and be held accountable. 
if there's an issue, I'm accountable. Um, his concern was, he actually made a comment that I hadn't considered was, if, if the commission's gonna in fact be approving all the purchases, uh, that makes the commission then accountable for every purchase, which is fine and dandy, but just comments from during discussion, so whatever. Alder person Hannah. Thank Alderman you, Hannah, excuse me. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so Ron, the, the current chairman of the commission does receive in his packet a check ledger. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have on the floor, Oh, okay. Sorry, thank you. It didn't click in when I tried Sorry. to do it, when I wanted <laughs> to speak. So, um, <laughs> but I would, uh, I would ask, so I just want to make sure, I think I, I read uh, from Alderman Boren, what we would be doing is to say that we don't want it to conform to what I thought Chairman Gisha said was a statute. Ordinance. ordinance. Or an ordinance. We're going to change that ordinance and let them conform. Okay, so that would be what we're voting on. I would ask um, this body's permission to open up the floor to Citizen Wachowski uh, uh, and ask him to hand out the information he has uh, before we vote. Thank you, Madam okay, Chair. Thank you. Okay, is that okay? Is, uh, Mr. Wachowski, yeah. Citizen, okay. Mr. Chairman, can I call a point of order, please? Yes. Okay. Good. The council cannot order the commission. They cannot order the whole committee to consider. You cannot, citizens cannot call the point of order. Yeah, well, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're, we're, we're talking about commission work. All right, Ed, Mr. Bukowski, you wanna pass out some other material? Okay. Yes, okay. Uh, uh, on the point of order. Passing it out, Mr. Bukowski? Yeah, keep passing it out. Um, on the point of order, uh, as a deliberative body, um, this is our time to speak, to have public input. Um, it is up to the chair, really, uh, to make a judgment on what is allowed and what is not allowed within this. Uh, the, the board itself may, may vote to overrule your ruling. Um, in this case, um, for the information, all I would simply take is your point to say um, that Ed could go ahead and, and pass the information out. So just as a point of order, that as the chair, this isn't mm -hmm. the common council. This has a different set of rules. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Rakowski, um, we, we have another meeting coming up at 7. I just want to mention that uh, finance meets at 7. And, um, okay. I spent a lot of time putting together this document, okay, and it's not based on my opinion. It's based on your records and fact. But before I start, let me say this. We talk about the library, and the library has the same obligation, and I happen to be a trustee of the library. And to fulfill my obligation and oath of office, I put this document together because transit billed $3,900 plus to the library for the assessment which you approved. When we tried to get an answer to why, we could not get a satisfactory answer of why we got $3,900 billed. So I did a little bit of an investigation, and now I want to share that investigation with you. And I'm not going to read every page, because that would take too long. Page number two shows you the ordinance that's being uh, brought forth. And on the surface, that seems to be a very, very clean type ordinance. But it goes a lot deeper than that. And I mean a lot deeper than that. Because on page three, it alludes to what I told you on the bottom regarding the mayor, the police chief, and the city development director. If you look on page four, it states very clearly, it doesn't say that a transit commission can do what they want to do, how they want to do it, and why they want, when they want to do it. It says, all transit commission expenditures shall be audited, audited by the commission, and if approved by the commission, shall be paid by the city in a manner provided by ordinance. I'm not going to go over all of the pages here, but this gives you a copy of what the restrictions and authorities, the ordinance regarding transit and parking. The next sheet, page 16, starts a worksheet that I put together. And where did I get the figures? I got it from the trial balance that was supplied to me by the finance department. If Mr. McDonald has stated 
that this works very well, the system that they are using. Well, if you take a look at the charges as they go across the board here for parking, you will note that on some lots it doesn't snow. On other lots, there's no stormwater fee. On one lot, you have uh, unemployment compensation for a lot that has nobody working on it. And you have two lots, 13 and 14, <coughs> that are losing a considerable amount of money and absolutely nothing is being discussed by the Transit Commission. So I don't think you can say it works very well. Some excerpts from page 20, some excerpts from the financial report, the trial balance of the city, which are the next pages on there, reveal that at the end of the year, the transit had a million three in the bank. Obviously that money was needed for something because they don't get the money from the federal <coughs> government until later in the year. But why isn't someone taking a look at that million three when you took a look at a million dollars that was in the library budget held over and the $8 million that was in the public works budget. The Transit Commission has stated at their meetings, the Transit Director has stated at their meetings, that we get five times any dollars that you invest in the transit is matched five times by the federal government. Figures are there in the book. Take a look at them. It's not five times, not even three times. Salaries. Salaries were $95,000 less than budgeted. <coughs> this is for the transit drivers. Health insurance less than budgeted. Yet, if you look at the other package I gave you that has the minutes for the transit uh, meetings, you'll see that it was brought forth to the Transit Commission to reduce the service to the ridership because there wasn't enough money. Well, if there wasn't enough money, you have to say, wait a minute, what happened to that money? And I'd like to go along with the logic. And I'm not going to go through all this stuff. You can read it yourself. $216,227.33 was approved for power transit, excuse me, was spent for power transit over and above the budgeted amount approved by the Transit Commission without any approval by anybody other than the Transit Director. The meat and potatoes of this package are in the sheets that are colored. There are three entities in the city. The Water Commission, the Water Commission, all accounts of water department shall be audited by the Board of Public Works, by Board of Water Works <coughs> commissioners, and upon approval shall be paid by the finance director, so on and so forth. Fiscal control for the, for the transit. Uh, all transit commission expenditures shall be audited. State statute for the library board, the same identical thing. So all three have the same identical rules. Now, Mr. McDonald has stated that there are bills that have to be paid upon presentation. Well, if you take a look at the statute for the library, you'll see it states that all recurring bills <coughs> can be paid if those recurring bills are approved in advance, the ability to pay those upon demand, as long as they're paid, as long as they're approved at the next meeting which means it's total transparency, okay? It deals with that, so that's not a legitimate argument, okay? Now let's take a look at one other thing, and this is something that I think is very concerning to me, and that's the oath of office. And when you get sworn into your job, the same as every commissioner, every member of every committee, signs the oath of city office, and the oath of city office says, I will faithfully discharge the duties of said office to the ability, to best of my abilities to help me God. It says each <coughs> person at the top is, signs this oath. There's a section that says, if you don't do what you're supposed to do and live up to your oath, how you're removed, and there's a code of ethics that applies. 
I think the Common Council ought to take a look at have the transit commissioners lived up to their oath by refusing, and I say refusing because I have brought to the transit commission over months that they are violating the section of the law that says they're approved to approve the bills. And they said, we don't want to do it in so many words. They were very upset and they refused to do it. I also brought the same information to the <coughs> finance director. And for months, I asked the finance director, how can you pay bills that are not approved? You're, you're in effect taking the authority of the transfer commission and you're supposed to be checks and balances. Well, finally, on page 31, you will see that the finance director took some action and said, in essence, yes, you guys are violating the proper section, section 2-563. And then, and only then, did the transit director attempt or foster this resolution, which, in essence, would take and make what they're doing legal. Uh, beyond me, how a, how a finance director can pay bills that are not approved. That's something that really ought to be taken a look at because they have an oath of office too. And in conclusion, and you have all my conclusions here, and I'd ask you to read them. But there's one thing that I do want to read to you, just for the record, for the people that don't have a copy of this. Based on the reading of the attachment, the conclusions would seem obvious that the Transit Authority, Transit Commission, and maybe the Finance Director, along with the City of Sheboygan Government, not only acknowledge the fact of not following city-state statutes as required by law, but further are doing this act of defiance. And why defiance? Because if you put in an ordinance to change a law, that doesn't mean that you can just disregard the ordinance that's there. You have to follow that. This is contrary to the original intent of the law and finds no exception, successful challenge to date in the state. Further, it defeats the proven concept of which we operate in a democracy by eliminating the very system of checks and balances conceived to protect the public interest from misuse and waste of public money. It should also be noted that the lack of constraint, at least yearly updates of the records, is lacking, which leaves the door open to further errors not consistent with good business practices. Additionally, the lack of accounting in the area of transit parking accountability is almost non-existent. This particular department of the city cries for a complete investigation audit, investigative audit to determine the accuracy of all monies acquired and their subsequent dispersal according to the law and good government accounting practices. Finally, the complete structure of this department, its administrative management and controlling commission members is in high question of the competence capability to actually run this department and may need state intervention to bring <coughs> this entire situation back to an even and more basic requirement of law. I ask you not to vote on this tonight, but to hold it because there's a lot in here that you want to take a look at. But I think it's very important that you take a look at the oath of office. And if you find that the oath of office has been violated, then if you don't take action, then the oath of office for anybody means nothing. And if I sound like I'm going to look excited, I am on this one, issue here, because I think it's an important issue, and it's the foundation of government checks and balances and responsibilities. And I live up to my responsibilities on the board for the library. And we review every month, every bill. We get a breakdown of those bills. And the bills are actually brought to the meeting. So if you have a question on the bill, you can actually go and see the bill. And that's before it's paid. Also, we get a complete breakdown here of the month-to-month -month status of the accounts. Thank you very much. Okay. Is there anything? Uh, all the person, Hannah. Yeah, just thank you, Ed. You're welcome. Uh, but I have a question sure. for you. When you were chair of the commission, how did you handle it? 
I'm sorry? When you were chair of the Transit Commission, how were things handled? When I was chair, when I was chair on the Transit Commission, I'm ashamed to admit it that I was misled. I did not know about this. And I did not know that they were supposed to uh, handle the bills. Okay? And I would not have known it had I not done this investigation. However, one month, because I wanted the Transit Commission to see the finances, I had the trial balance for the Transit Commission given to each and every member of the Transit Commission at that meeting. And my selective recall will tell you this, that Alderman Graff raised the question that they didn't want to see these. And everybody, and not the present tra Transit Commission, except for several individuals, said, we don't want to see these bills anymore. We don't want to see them. I did not know the ignorance at that point did not know that we were supposed to be approving these bills. Had I known that, and had I been the position I am now, I certainly would have insisted that that be part of each and every meeting. And the Transit Commission presently can't say that they don't know because I have told them over and over and over at each meeting, and I've been ruled out of order. Okay, um, Alder Person Rinfleisch. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, obviously, there's a lot of information here to absorb. Um, and there's really two issues I think that we need to hear from. One is, would be the transit director to respond uh, to uh, what we've seen, what we've heard, uh, as well as then um, city attorney's office to kind of give us direction on really the proper direction to go. You know, what is requirement, what is suggestion, what is, you know, shall versus may kind of language that we often see in, in the documents. Uh, so it was, I believe, my motion to... Um, to pass, was it? Mm. No. no, someone else made that motion. I asked whoever did make the motion, since Oswald wasn't me. I don't think there is a motion yeah. right now. Uh, there is a motion to. Motion second. Motion second to. They would be saying yeah. this to prove that to the common council. I would ask that. Send um, down to common council with yeah. the. I would ask those who made the motion in the second to refer to the committee of the whole of the, of the common council, the next common council. Okay. Okay, it's been uh, moved and seconded to forward this to the next committee of the whole for the next session of the Common Council. Any other discussion? Just a brief comment, if I may, on that. Okay, the, uh, yes. Thank you. Uh, uh, I, had, I spoke be earlier regarding the checks and balances of the commission, and I would have voted to not approve this change personally. But for the record, it's not because I think there's anything underhanded, nefarious, or or otherwise um, state intervention-wise uh, going on with our transit director. Uh, Ron and I have had many spirited and fun disagreements or discussions, but uh, I've never questioned his personal integrity. Uh, even if I would have voted no on that, it had nothing to do with that. It was more of a structural check and balance. Uh, we're really over time. Sir, are you on the commission? I'm not. I write questions. Uh, this is really a question about the commission. I think we don't, we don't, uh, ridership is not really a matter of, of concern at this Madam point. Madam Chair, if this is moved to the um, next, com the next committee, of, committee of the whole, yes. Or the committee of the whole, uh, will citizens be able to address those issues now at that time? That'll be, up to the, that'll be up to the chairperson of that next committee of the whole to do that, to put it on the agenda. Yeah. And again, just If it's on the agenda, yes. At any time in the near future, granting whatever it is that the committee of the whole chooses. Yes, you can come to a commission meeting, too. It's a public meeting. You can come to the Transit Commission meeting. What I have a concern about probably can't be dealt with by the commission. It will have to be handled by you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I think, are we, is it, uh, Alderman Rinfleisch, did you want to speak on uh, To speak to the public, um, we do have also between the, for the Common Council, those five slots of uh, public forum that are available to the public to speak as well. Yes. So that, that there is available um, every other Monday basically comes up that the, the public would be able, allowed to speak on this issue. Did you hear that, sir? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, thank okay. You, All right, thank you. All right, uh, let's move on this issue. Um, it's uh, the motion on the floor is to move to the Committee of the Whole of the next Council. All in favor? Aye. Anybody opposed? It passes as being moved on. 
Alderman Bob. Yeah. Chair, all the, the rest of the documents, 6 to 18 minus 9 and... 7, seven and 8. Minus 8, eight, eight and 9. nine sorry. I would move uh, to be uh, filed. Second. Any discussion? Okay, all the rest of the documents uh, are removed to file. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, they're filed. House is, house is clean. Adjourned? Second. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for coming. No, we did that twice.